focus on hitting your goals in every area of your business. Remember, the universe rewards the bold. A leader has to take the risks. So welcome to the Wealth on the Beach podcast. My name is Daniel Lonzo, and always I'm bringing you some of the greatest people in the world. We're talking business, we're talking money, we're talking massive, passive residual income. And today I have uh, one of the most special people, uh, one of my very, very good friends in all the world, and uh, his name is Dean Francis. Dean Francis is a senior national sales director. Uh, he's a multi-million dollar earner. He started part-time with a financial services company during his senior year at Liberty University. Uh, he came from humble beginnings and just wanted to, you know, pay for his honeymoon. <laughs> so um, Dean and his wife, Sarah, have five children, celebrated 30 years, just 30, 30 years of marriage, man. You rock, buddy. Uh, and they have over 500 licensed reps in their businesses. Um, the, their mission is to help others dream bigger and make it happen. So Dean, thanks so much for being here uh, with me, man. What's it like being married for 30 years, man? That's a... That's quite a feat, dude. Hey, well, for me, it's been it's been awesome. I you know, I mean, it's Sarah is the one that's had to endure, um, but uh, it is it's been you know it's been exciting. You know, you think about a lot of people they are married, and then there's others that are in love, and uh, we've been fortunate to be both. And uh, she's been my best friend, and uh, just really excited. Just celebrated yesterday. Oh, congratulations, man! Hey, so so the other question I have for you is. What does it feel like? Because again, this is this is something that most people will never experience. Um, but tell us, what does it feel like to be financially independent? Well, uh, it is worth it. Is uh, I think the first thing that comes to mind. I mean, when I think of uh, just the coronavirus that is experienced um, over the last few months, to really be kind of unaffected. Um, you know, our life goes on. We've got that recurring income. We're in great shape financially. And um, we can continue to live our lives. You know, we had to pay a really big price early on. Um, nothing good comes easy. Um, but that price that we paid many years ago, it just goes on and on. And it's in moments like this that I'm like so thankful to not have to look at um, I don't know, when you buy something or you order some food, like we, you know, here we have to order our food in all the time, but we never have to look at the menu from right to left. You know, we just order what we want and just those little things, um, just so precious. Oh man, that's, it's awesome. I mean, I, I just think about financial independence, Dean, as just, it's, it's the freedom and the choices and the options that I think it has really been a blessing. And you're right. I mean, there's so many people right now, which is devastating for so many people. I mean, what, 30 million people are out of jobs right now. And, uh, and the number's probably higher than that, but that's what's, uh, what, what we've been told. And, and I just think it's, it's so devastating that these people, that there are opportunities out there for them. And maybe, maybe this, this happening could give them a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel saying, man, maybe I got to do something different. Maybe I can't rely on a job. I mean, you know, is, is, do you know anything about like, you know, the corporate nightmare or the, you know, people dealing with that? I mean, you personally ever, well, ever gone th through th that? Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully I have never had to endure the corporate nightmare. Okay. Like at 21, I mean, I was raised by amazing parents, um, but they were just school teachers. They knew nothing about money, nothing about business, but I got exposure to people who were successful in business at age 21. I didn't understand it fully. I didn't, under, I didn't have the work ethic. I was lacking in everything. But when I saw it, I knew that's what I wanted. And so um, I started part-time when I was in college and right after graduation, we got literally married the next week. So I went full time, like right away. I never ever had to work for anybody else other than those part time jobs, you know, in high school and college. And I'm so thankful. Now, I had a lot of growing up to do. Uh, I didn't realize how hard you had to work. So I created some challenges for myself in the first two, three years. 
but uh, I am so thankful. I've never had to work for anybody else. No one, the only person that's ever held me back is me. I can look in the mirror and I can change it. Love it, love it. So, so, so tell me about, well, first of all, I wanna know, like what was your childhood like? I mean, you said you had pretty great parents. Uh, so tell me about your mom, tell me about your dad. Tell me about the history of you growing up those first, you know, 20 years. Well, you know, I figured this out probably, probably age 40, 45, I'm 51 now. And I told my mom and dad, I said, you know, when you're raising kids, you always are kind of doubting yourself. Like, I hope I'm doing this right. I, you know, cause right. I mean, the things that come without instructions in life, you know, kids and paychecks and, so I said, you know, looking back, um, they certainly didn't know anything about money or business, but I said, you have no idea the impact that you actually had on me. It all makes sense now. The reason that I was not scared to fail, and if you're gonna go win, in, if you're gonna go win big in life and in business, you, you have to be able to overcome fear, especially fear of failure. And I now realize I realized at that point why I was able to overcome it. It was because my parents loved me unconditionally, period. My dad used to say this to me before every race or every uh, uh, game that I would play in, like a basketball you know, game, like you know, in high school and junior high. Anyway, he would say this all the time. He'd say, no, son, I just want you to let you know um, uh, your mom and I are just so proud of you. And uh, regardless of your performance today, regardless of the outcome, we just want you to know we love you. And I remember as a kid going, are you going to say this every single time? Like it was kind of almost annoying. I got the point and I liked the fact that they were there all the time, but I'm like, do you really need to say that? But it got ingrained into me and I knew regardless of my outcome that my parents love me. I, and, and I think love conquers fear. When you have that kind of, when you feel loved and, and that kind of security, you will feel the fear, but I think it allows you to overcome so much more. And so, you know, growing up, were you middle class? Were you rich? Were you, I mean, where were you on the economic scale, scale growing up? Yeah, I would say probably, you know, lower middle um, parents were teachers. So we, I don't remember ever a time that, you know, they couldn't pay their bills. They had secure jobs. It's just when I saw some of my friends going on maybe more grand vacations, I never got to experience that, but they always took time to take us on a vacation, even though we would need to drive wherever we went and stay with some relatives and things like that, uh, nothing fancy, never, I never had, in my whole childhood, I never had any exposure to people who were wealthy. I never saw anybody succeed big time in business or really live free. That was seemed foreign to me. I, I, I didn't, uh, yeah, there was no connection there. I thought that was something that happened to other people, but uh, not, not me, until I got close to it and I saw it was possible. Now, do you think that growing up as a, as a kid, Dean, do you think you had some of that inside of you? Like, did you, did you have a little of that longing to want, like you saw your friend go on a grand vacation or do something cool or go to Hawaii or something. And you're like, man, that would be cool to do that. Do you remember that being in your mind at all? Or, well, I don't know if I thought I probably did some. But I think what you're hitting at, Daniel, is uh, something that is, was very true inside of me. And that is, I wanted to have impact with my life. I wanted to do something big. I um, don't fully understand where all of that maybe comes from. But I remember in high school, I got interviewed for a scholarship. And uh, it was a group of you know adults. It's kind of a little scary. And they asked me this question. They said, if you had a million dollars, what would you do? And I remember I would volunteer my time in inner city Detroit for uh, children's uh, ministries. And I remember just instinctively just saying, 
I would give that money to like that, that ministry. I, because I thought, my gosh, if they had a million dollars, they could have so much impact on the city of Detroit with children. And um, it was just, it was natural to me. I just said it and I never thought about it, you know, and then later I won out of all this big competition. And they said, that was it. They said, everybody else wanted to take their million and go travel the world, which is nothing wrong with that. I mean, I mean, who wouldn't want to travel the world? I mean, that's normal. This is all really good. So um, to me, I felt like, you know, this is part of one of my favorite sayings is that our success blesses others. The reason that we should be striving for excellence and, and achieving um, in as many ways as we can in our lives to succeed in our marriages and business, wealth, everything is because that success turns around and it blesses others. And there's nothing more fulfilling than that. All right. So you got recruited into business. Who recruited you and how did that all come about? So I remember hating this part-time job I had. I was doing telemarketing to raise money for something. And, and I just thought there's got to be a way to make more money. I mean, uh, I, I, Sarah and I were engaged. I'm totally broke. I got nothing. I want to take this beautiful young girl on this amazing honeymoon if I can. That was kind of a bit of a dream. And so I am motivated. And so I found a newspaper ad because back in the day, okay, for all of the young people watching or listening today, that um, that's how you did it. And the ad just said, business expanding fast. Uh, we will do the training, earn 500 to 1500 a month part time. And, uh, and so I just thought maybe there's a chance for me. Maybe because this business is growing fast enough, maybe they would um, talk to me. And I called and this guy explained on the phone what they did, financial blah, blah, blah. I had no idea what he said, none. I, I just remember going, sir, your ad said that part-time I could make 500 to 1500 a month. Is that true? And he goes, he goes actually, once you're licensed and trained, um, that's very true. In fact, you could make a lot more. And I said, how do I find out more? And uh, he said, well, actually, we're, we're, we've got an informational meeting going on, and why don't you come out to that? And I did, and uh, I learned about the impact that I could have in this business on people's lives, that helping people get totally debt-free, save money, get free financially, you know, um, worry less about money, enjoy life more. And when I saw that, I was very, my heart got captured. And of course, the fact that you could make a lot of money helping others just uh, was over the top for me. Did you have an early mentor that, uh, that you feel like maybe changed your life in some way? Did you have anybody like that? Big time, yeah, big time. Um, they, the people who I actually worked with initially, um, they were good people in lots of ways, but they um, uh, eventually kind of went a different direction and uh, I didn't feel comfortable with it ethically. So I did not follow them. And so I then got really a new mentor. And uh, his name is Larry, Larry Wydell. And you know him, Daniel. And I, 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 um, I'll never forget this moment. So I'm so intimidated to work with him. This guy's making millions of dollars. I'm this kid who's making like $3,000 a month. And, uh, and I'll never forget this moment. Um, uh, I was walking across the stage to get a really simple award. It was not a big award, okay? But it was something. And uh, it was his event. He was running it. Uh, and he literally grabbed Sarah and I when we came across the stage. I'll never forget this. You know, I'm like 24. He bear hugs us, puts his arms around us, and he says in my ear, he goes, you're going to be big, man. You're going to be big. And I swear, Daniel, I get chills right now even thinking about that moment. He breathed life into me that day. I don't know what happened, but something came alive. And uh, I've never been the same since. And so when you look back at that moment, that was kind of a transition moment for you mentally. 
okay? And so when you look at maybe those first few years, those first, you know, maybe five years in your business, let's talk about that because I know that they, they were some tough days. There was some tough times that you went through financially and, you know, business-wise. Tell us about that. Well, so to give you context, right, I'm the guy who is uh, taking Sarah to work at her minimum wage job every morning, and we only have one car. So, and uh, I would drop her off at like 7 a.m., and then I thought, well, I'm in business for myself. I'm my own boss. And I would drive back home. She didn't know this. I got back in bed, <laughs> and so I kept sleeping. And then I would pick her up at 3.30, in the afternoon, drive back home, and I would then uh, turn on the TV, and I watched two hours, like faithfully, almost every day, of an old, stupid sitcom called Mama's Family. And don't ask me why. I was addicted. And then um, on Saturday mornings, I'm watching cartoons, okay? Like seriously, like in, from my bed, I got a little TV, and I'm watching, I mean, Bugs Bunny. I mean, I love that show. Anyway, so, um, and Garfield was another favorite. And, uh, and, then, um, and then Sarah at times would kind of get frustrated with me because she would catch me, she would go to sleep and I didn't want to wake her up. And then it would be like two in the morning and she would find me in the closet playing Tetris, you know? And um, so I, you have to get this context, okay? I am creating all of my problems, okay? When I'm not making money, it, it is because I don't understand work ethic, focus, daily discipline. I don't, I'm not working on self-improvement, my people skills, my attitude's not right. Um, I mean, like, pretty much the only good thing I had going at that point in my life was there was this dream inside of me. Um, I wanted to have purpose, and I was willing to show up. My dad taught me that you always show up, you never miss. And because I kept getting around people who were successful, that started to kind of pour into me. And then, of course, I shared that moment there um, that where we get this bear hug, you're going to be big man. And uh, oh, and then Sarah became pregnant. That's that was the big deal. She became pregnant. And at that point, it was all out. I'm I'm not going to let my family down. I'm all that myself down. I am not letting my family down. And I got up every morning early and I focused like crazy. So that's a little bit of those early so, uh, years. So tell me a little bit about, you know, those early years and kind of getting this. So now you've just mentally shifted. You're like, okay, I'm getting focused. I got a baby on the way. I got to take care of my family. What'd you do? You know, what are some of the things looking back? What was your daily schedule like, you know, and, and what type of numbers were you doing? What, you know, how did you really start creating momentum? Yeah, so I remember distinctly um, making a decision, number one, that I was going to become the most positive, enthusiastic person I could possibly be. I had heard from everybody that was successful as a leader, as a business leader, that you have to change you. Until you change you, you don't become this person that other people are willing to follow. And I remember always thinking like, okay, is there something else you need to tell me? Because what's the big deal? I need to be positive. I mean, and, and, and finally I got frustrated and I thought, you know what, I'm going to listen to these people. I remember I had another mentor, his name uh, is Glenn Walden and Glenn was a machinist in the shipyard. And um, uh, that was his former background and grew up on a peanut farm, no college education. So here I am, you know, I've got the college degree. I'm supposed to be the intelligent person, man. That guy taught me more about life and business than anybody and he had this mental toughness about him. So it wasn't positive attitude of, you know, pie in the sky. It was no matter what happens to me on a daily basis, when I get punched in the nose and I get, I get maybe some rejection, I get a setback. I, it was an attitude that says, this is only going to make me stronger. This is going to make me better. I am going to overcome this. And I started building this positive attitude. No matter what you threw at me, it hurt but I was going to pop back. And I think that was very, very significant. The other thing was certainly my daily routine. Um, I always heard that said that um, the uh, future to our, the key to our future success is always found in our daily and our weekly routine. And for me, oh yeah, I was up early. I mean, that, I mean, literally I found out Sarah was pregnant 
because she she made it really clear when we were dating and got engaged. She wanted to stay at home. Okay, she wanted to be a stay at home mom. That was her dream. Lots of kids, be a stay at home mom. And I sold myself on that. That was where I learned sales, Daniel. I cl I was good. I mean, I told her, baby, I am your man. I am going to make all your dreams come true. I mean, I, I had sold myself and I do have integrity. So when the moment happens and she's like, now, you know, I'm not going back to work. My first response was, I don't make enough money, but she's, she was good. She didn't even flinch. She was like, you better figure it out, you know? And, uh, and so uh, the next morning I'm, I'm up early. I'm at the office by eight o'clock. Um, I get myself organized. Um, I, back in that day, um, you know, without internet technology of the day, it was a lot of phone calls. Um, uh, you know, I focused a lot on, rec on, on recruiting, finding and training more representatives that had some leadership potential. And I would talk to people like for two and a half hours, like every single morning. I made those calls every day, Monday through Thursday. If I hit my target number, I gave myself the day off making all those phone calls um, on uh, Friday, but otherwise I, I was very disciplined. And of course, people would be calling me then, they'd be calling me back because I'd left voicemails and I would just, and everything, the, I went through the numbers. I paid the prospecting price that you have to pay in business to go through enough numbers to, to create that success. And it was amazing. It was 90 days later, 90 days later, my income is exploding. Everything took off. Yeah, because I, I and I think that's so such an important thing, Dean. Because I think a lot of people they forget that it is a numbers game, business, life. It's a numbers game, and I think that people get so frustrated and they quit before they find those great people. And so, if you hadn't paid that price, you would have never find found those great people that came into business with you and helped your business grow. And, you know, cause obviously you couldn't do what, where you're at today without great people. And so was there, uh, that first great person? Like, if, like I know in my mind who my first great person was that I brought in, who was that for you? Oh yeah. Um, I'll, uh, there were probably a few, but I, um, I think the, the first person that comes to mind was a young guy named Steve. And um, he, was, he was awesome. He was married, had a little one at home, but he had this great personality. He was ambitious. He was in a job and he wanted to get free of the job. And he was a dreamer. He was fun to be around. He was, and I remember um, when, uh, you know, having Steve, it made me feel like a million bucks, you know, it made me better. Uh, you know, it's like iron sharpens iron. And when you start getting, finding some people that you can be in business together and you know, you can rely on each other and go after something together, man, that's powerful. That's an amazing concept. And so that guy, what he brought to your business, I mean, you know, it, it did it just start, taken off like did it start growing did he end up becoming an rvp or did he end up becoming successful or like what was that first guy that you brought in that ended up becoming really successful in the business who was that for you so um well i've, I've had i mean gosh i've had a few i think i'll i'll go to more modern day uh okay all right modern day world for this just because steve was kind of that early stage and he did he had some great success went on to make over a hundred thousand a year, but made some poor personal choices. And okay, right? I mean, that's in fact that's a that's a lesson, Daniel. We just I just need to say it right here. Yeah. When yeah, I was yeah. 25, when I was 25 and I made over a hundred thousand dollars, okay. For me, right, coming from where I'm coming from, this is like unbelievable. I'm 25. I'm I got no boss. I just made a hundred grand. I'm so excited. Um, that was about as big as I could even dream at that point in my life. And and so I'll never forget, I had a mentor, another, another unbelievable, uh, successful man come to me and he said, Dean, I need to just share with you something. He said, I'm so proud of you and Sarah. It's so exciting to see what's going on. He said, but I want to share with you some, some wisdom. He said, there's two things that'll knock people out um, long-term and you want to make sure that you win long-term. And he said, number one, it's bad finances. 
if you don't manage your money right, it can knock you out. It happens to a lot of people. And number two, it's a bad personal life. And it usually has to do with marriage. It could be other things. It could become an addiction. But he said it's so important that you make sure you manage your money right and you manage your personal life. He said, if you do those things and you keep working, nothing will stop you. And, uh, and I, I appreciate that because that is, I've, I've seen that happen to a lot of people over the years, just in business, not just people I work with, just people. But anyway, so more modern day, yeah, uh, an amazing man, um, same kind of thing. I kind of hit a moment where I'm going to put the pedal to the metal. I'm going to go find some more just, you know, great uh, um, superstars that I can work with, which it takes work. I mean, you can't, great people are, are hard to find. You got to dig, you got to, right? And so I met this guy, 12 kids. How about that? 12 kids, former Lieutenant Colonel uh, out of the army, 24 years. I mean, had actually had like almost 3000 people under his command at one point. And um, he had gotten out of the military and he did not want to work a job. He wanted to be his own boss. He wanted to win in business. And I met that guy. He came in here and bam, he had discipline, focus, people skills, attitude, and was fun and adventurous. And uh, he just went bam, 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 bam. I had lots of success. And because of that, it created more excitement in an in, in environment in our whole organization. I mean, environment is everything. When you win, people want to be a part of it. it we, we were, I was talking this morning to, to our group this morning, and I was talking about momentum. You know, momentum makes you look better than we are sometimes, and it makes us look worse than we are when we don't have it. And I think that you, you got caught up in momentum because you found some players, you know? And, and I think that, that everybody's got to realize that when you're losing, when you're failing, when things aren't happening fast enough, you just got to hang on because they're coming. You know, that one recruit away from an explosion, they're coming. And, and we just got to be patiently excited enough for that moment to actually happen. And uh, do, do you kind of, what do you think about that? Does that make any sense? Yes. Um, uh, I, I think it's that it's waking up every day with an expectation that something great's going to happen. And it's keeping hope, it, it, hope alive. You know, I, someone taught me many years ago, when you um, uh, focus on the past or sometimes the present, you can get depressed. But when you focus on the future, you get excited. And so it's kind of knowing that if I if I pay that price, I, and, and, and I'm going to find that next superstar, that next person that kind of helps take everything to the next level. So present day, man, we're here, we're now, we're in quarantine, we're living the Zoom life right now, okay? We got websites, and we got marketing plans, and we got all these different things that we never had. I mean, What's Dean Francis doing now? You're a million dollar earner, man. You, sh you could be relaxing on the beach somewhere, not doing anything. Why are you working so hard? And what are some of the things that you're doing to take your business to that next generation, that next level? Yeah, yeah. so great question. Um, you know, this has been so much fun. I really, for this uh, probably first um, four and a half months of the year, I probably have worked as harder, harder, than I have in 30 years. And I think it's a blast. I think it's exciting. I think it, I feel like I'm giving birth to an entirely new business because I am embracing all the technology, social media, things that you're ahead of me on, Daniel. You've done an amazing job. job. I've watched the things that you've done it. And I have to say, um, uh, you know, and this is a lesson, okay? It, when I first started this journey, which technically was probably 18 months ago, it was like learning a new language in a new culture, really embracing technology and, so, and, and social media. Like, and it hurt, it hurt, it, you know, like it was so, and, I, and it, it was a painful almost process, but I kept knowing everything inside of me that the future is leveraging technology and social media. And those who do can, can, can 10X 
their businesses, their lives, and that impacts others. And, um, you know, and I've got kids who are telling me, they're like, Dad, if you would, if you would really leverage new technology, and so, it would be incredible what you could do. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I finally started that journey. And, um, uh, and so now, because I, my head's wrapped around it, not that I'm an expert, I've been having a blast. And so um, I am, I'm just, I'm like redesigning the entire business so that it's 100% virtual. Not just that it's 100% virtual, but that it actually is uh, getting amazing results 100% virtual. And so I had a conversation, I'll share this from last week. This inspired me. I feel like this is the path I'm on. So I happen to be friends with the guy who actually created creditcards.com. He built that company and sold it for 300 million, okay? A team of 12 people that he led. He was an average guy trying to succeed in business just like everybody else. He had never been super successful before, very modest success, and he finally made his breakthrough. So I called him up last week because this is how I feel. I'm about to launch like this whole new, we've been doing things, okay, testing things, and I'm about to launch something, okay? And, um, and I wanted to talk to him. And he said, Dean, this is what got in my head. He said, let me tell you, he said, you're on the verge of something so huge because more people, right? More people need financial direction than ever before all over North America. And, uh, but no one has ever truly connected um, a high touch sales force with high tech internet. Um, it's really no one, I mean, people have done one, they've done the, oh, the little bit of the other, no one's put it together. And, 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 and he said, you're on, I can tell you're on the verge of this, of really doing something big. And he said, but here's what I want you to know. He said, when we built creditcards.com, said, I'm not exaggerating this. He said, creditcards.com was the greatest digital salesperson in ever. He said, creditcards.com could sell it better than me. And I'm the one who created it. And so what have I been caught up with? A, a basically a digital marketing system that can close as good or better than I can. And um, it, is, uh, it, is, it is almost there. Now, he also said this. He said, we work on every color of every button. And he said, your messaging has to be perfect. You have to test things like crazy. You're constantly adjusting and so forth and so on. And so I feel like I've been in the lab, but about to launch this thing. And I'm sure I'll keep, I'll keep tweaking and testing, but man, that's what I'm excited about. Oh my God, man. This is, that was like, you're in a zone, dude. I love it, man. I love it. I love it when people, when the light bulb goes on, I love it because it's in, it's exciting for me because I've been feeling this way for a long time, Dean, as you know, I've been feeling this way for a long time. And I love that you're on board, man. I love that you're, you're even taking it to a new level, baby. And it's going to be exciting. And we're going to collaborate and we're going to help each other. And we're going to, I'm going to learn from you a whole bunch of stuff. And, uh, and I'm just excited for you. I'm really proud of you, Dean. I mean, um, you are one of the most successful people in the history of our company. I mean, we're talking 45 years this thing's been around. I mean, multi, multi millions of people have been recruited in and out of this place. And you are one of the, the top probably 50 people in the entire history of this thing being around. And that's something to be very, very proud of. No matter what happens from here on out, man, no matter what happens, you have done something incredible and you have changed so many people's lives. And just even this conversation here is going to be, it's going to go out to hundreds of thousands of people and, uh, and, and, and people are going to be inspired by you and you're going to make a difference for a lot of people. So that, that, that mission that you had as a young kid, you know, to want to make an impact, I just want you to know, and, and I know you're only getting started because you're, you're only 51, you're a young stud still. Um, but you're, you really have, if you went tomorrow, I just want you to know that you have made a major, major impact on this world. And, uh, and I thank you for that. So, um, Hey, Dean, I want to know from you because there are people out your way that are going to be listening to this podcast. Okay. 
And they're, this is going to reach all four corners of the United States. It's going to get up to Canada. Who knows? Maybe even the entire world, okay? But I want to know how we can get in touch with you because there's somebody out there right now that's listening to this and says, hey, man, I like that Dean guy. I want to go into business with him. I want to be a part of his crusade. I want to be a part of his mission. I want to do something great with that guy. How do we get a hold of you, man? And how, how do we do that? All right. So, uh, hey, first of all, Dean, I just want to tell you thank you because uh, you and Karma have also just been people that have had a great impact on me. I mean, you're you're younger than me, but I, you know, in this business, you were always someone that I really looked up to. You guys, you always are always seeking excellence in every aspect of your life, and uh, you know, very unselfishly, um, you flew across the country, spoke for us. You did follow-up calls. You know, you genuinely care, um, you know, about people. And uh, so I just wanted to say thank you for that. So, um, okay. So as of today, uh, there's two ways. Um, I'm on Instagram. But I say that I'm, I'm new at Instagram, y'all. I'm, I'm new. I'm, okay, I'm getting there. But it's uh, Dean Francis with an extra S, okay? Or uh, you can go to deanfrancis.co.co. And um, so, but just in case we change that URL, um, you will definitely be able to find me on Instagram, Dean Francis with an extra S. And, and of course they can always Google you. They're gonna find you some way, somehow. And uh, man, I just tell you, I'm excited about the future, Dean. We appreciate you being uh, with us today and uh, we just wish you all the best. You know I'll always be here for you, man. Whatever you need, any day, any time. Um, but let's, uh, let's get together uh, soon, virtually, or one day in person soon, all right? Awesome, thank you very much, Daniel. Pleasure Appreciate to be here you, brother. You. All right, everybody, make sure you follow, follow Dean Francis. Make sure you share this podcast with everybody you know. And, uh, and, and always, as always, dream bigger than ever, but make sure that you do it now. God bless you. We'll see you at the top.